Hello folks, welcome back to the HS Tech channel. In this video we're going to take another look at good old SNA configuration, except this time we're going to have VMCMS talking to a Cisco router. We're running the full SNA SW, uh, SNA switching stack, not the ridiculous CLSW1 or the other one that's built into iOS that's junk. If you're going to do SNA, please use an SNA SW image. It will make your life a thousand times easier because it actually works, unlike the others, which are pretty room well, I mean, it's rudimentary for what it is, but I mean, it does work. It's just not really useful for app end and HPR and all that stuff. And then we're also going to be talking about Windows 2000 image. Uh, we're doing that, well, same old, same old. We're just doing it through standard Ethernet. But that one's actually running host integration server 2000. So, let's go ahead and take a look at our definitions here. This is what we've had. Same thing. There's our unit address. We're using Ethernet and not token ring. If you want token ring, just put ring. There's our SAP address. Timeout. We want inbound and outbound. We want everything to be dynamic if possible. And we want this thing to start up whenever we start this. Okay. Oh. Here's our Cisco router definition. The reason I'm showing it first is because note that this one has no PUs. And also note that DECNA address. <laughs> Notice a lot of these have DECNA addresses because I'm doing a lot of overlapping stuff here. Uh, same definition we've had, except note that there's no ID block and there's no ID num. iOS doesn't really care about those, so it won't make a difference either way. If we come up here and look at our Windows 2000 server, which is a little off the page. There we go. We're actually going to see two things here that are a little bit different. Obviously we have our same full definition here. This one does have ID block and ID number. There's our remote MAC address. Of course this right here is your remote SAP address in uh, correct format here, Big Indian. Now note here that we also have this. Okay, what in the world are we looking at here? Well this is actually for printing. And if you have the RSCS tab file loaded, and we can look at that in a second, you'll be able to actually do SNA printing. And we're going to take a brief look at this. Uh, I haven't really gotten it to work reliably. SNA printing is probably the hardest thing you'll ever do because you have to associate an LU with your terminal session when you actually log in. But we'll take a look at all that because fortunately we have a terminal emulator program built right into our Windows 2000 host integration server image. And we're going to use that sort of show us around. Okay. Um, this right here is the remote address of the LU. Obviously all of the Ethernet capable systems are also talking to an OS390 image, which all the links are down and I need to restart them. But we'll look at that when we look at the MVS VTAM world <laughs> in the next episode. This right here is the log mode. This log mode here is pretty much the one that you want. This one seems to work really reliably with the most terminal types. Although if you use some weird terminal size, like some custom, it's not going to work. It's sorry, you're stuck. You got to use model two or model four. Sometimes model three doesn't even work. But of course, the log mode for our printer is RSCS print one. And we're going to look at how you define all of this. So at this point, we can go ahead and make sure that, make sure that, oh, of course you can't actually do that. Nah, what's the command? Okay, yeah, so we're already good there. Uh, I don't think I have any definitions for that printer. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Okay, well, we'll have to define some of those. Fortunately, it's relatively easy to do. We'll just do a define command, and we'll plug that in once we look back at this later. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at that Cisco router system here. Now, this right here is pretty run the mill. I will have you know, this is actually virtualized. This is not a real router. Uh, there's just no need for me to run a real one. I don't run Cisco equipment around here anymore. So I just used a virtualized one. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do a show run and take a look at what you need. So we'll scrub through all the junk that doesn't really matter here. Believe it or not, there, oops. I forgot you cannot push the up arrow here. It is one way scrolling on this version. 
There is actually nothing that you need to specify here that tells you to use SNA because what we actually do is define everything here. So, okay. Do we want this? Yes. In other words, do you want to try to get CPCP connections? Yes. But you may not necessarily want them when you're talking to a mainframe. Okay, this right here, here's our control point name. Net ID and then control point name. This right here is our port and HPR stat means use HPR if you can. HPR is high performance routing. It's basically DECnet phase five routing for SNA. It's a subset of, oh, I'm sorry, it's a superset of AppIn. Okay, this right here, here's our links to stuff. Here's our VMESA machine that we saw a moment ago. Now remember, sometimes you may need to increment this last byte by one on whatever the host MAC address is, but that's okay. Of course, we're looking at something here that has a very obvious DECnet MAC address to it. <laughs> and all in all, this is pretty much all you need. Anything that you plug in that's not defined here will be automatically defined, and we may have some automatic links up. We'll look at that in a second. Oh. Okay, this machine also has LAT running and a bunch of other stuff, and also has DECnet and a bunch of other stuff. It also has good old-fashioned TCP IP routing, although that's not really doing anything for us. All right, so here's everything we can look at. Of course, being real SNASW, we have everything. And let me tell you, everything works. Uh, this right here is something that you may you may or may not be able to get the uh, HPR directory to work. I never could. You don't really need it either. I'm getting along just fine without it. If we have any dependent LU requesters, they show up here. All that is supported. And any PUs that are, well, I don't have that for using anything, so. And, and here's everything that you may actually want. Node active, man, it's been up forever. Um, there we go. This is what it's picking for the primary route, is that OS390 system. Unfortunately, that one isn't actually, I don't think it's up. Uh, we can do a show SNASW link in a second here. This does support branch extender. Please don't use branch extender. It's a nightmare. If you need it, you need to have a you need to have a check with yourself because you may not actually need branch extender. Okay, here's our node ID. This is actually the closest thing you'll get to the ID block. Um, don't worry about it though. You don't actually need to specify it anywhere. Okay, class of service cache size. If for some reason you suddenly fail to log in drive this up. Do you have HPR support? Yes. Do we have dependent all your question support? Yes. Do you need this? No. This is actually a program that you run under workstation. Okay. And then we're not tracing. Although if you have to trace, you may have an issue. All right. So let's continue looking at stuff and let's roll on and let's look at the Windows 2000 system. So we're on good old fashioned V and C here. And of course, you know how bad VNC is. The actual cursor there is not correspondent to the real cursor. So we're just going to keyboard our way through this after we drag this out. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is actually look at your link services. This right here is just a standard good old Ethernet. Please use the fixed SAT. If you have a variable SAT, you can have some pretty strange issues. Okay, this doesn't really matter what you call it. This is obviously a virtual machine, so I'm using a good old PC net. Do not allow this to be distributed unless you know what you're doing. So we're going to get out of this. Active users, this is when people start Telnet 327 or anything like that. Also, I'm not running Telnet 327 on here. You can, but it's not really good. It's a little bit clunky to set up. You have to use application LUs for this, but don't worry, we'll look at all that in a bit. Okay, well here's the link to the OS2 server. If we look at the properties on it, you'll be able to see everything you need to know. Remember, say everything is a host. I know that's bad practice, but I've gotten along just fine saying everybody's a host. I know it's kind of bad practice to do that, but it makes things a little bit more dynamic. There's our link service. You can put a comment in here if you want. I'm saying this to outbound only because I don't want people calling into the Windows 2000 server because this right here isn't like a appreciably relevant node. Okay, remote network address, boom. Remote SAP address, there you go. System identification, of course, this is to that OS2 server. So always use a format 3 XID. It's just you have to. 
don't use compression unless you really want to break stuff, because VTAM usually can't cope with compression. And then we'll look at our DLC perimeters. You can use 1493, you can use 1496, do not use 1500. I've had weird issues with 1500. That took like a week to track down. Okay, and then we'll look at our Cisco router link here, which is literally the exact same. Now, I did actually plug in a remote ID just to be sure. I, I guess you could say allocated one for it, but I didn't really need to do that. And then we'll look at our VMCMS link. This is what everyone came to see. Okay, so it's a host system. We're doing an outbound call into it. Here's our address. Boom. Remember, you have to sometimes increment this last octet here by one. System identification. There you go. And I literally just left this blank. It doesn't matter. Uh, you don't have to specify it unless you really want it. Okay. And then our DLC parameters. Same old, same old. Just use the same everything and it looks good. All right. Now let's look at the LUs. Now this right here is a terminal LU. This right here, this LU number, this right here is your lock adder thing, your local address back on your old VTAM configuration. Because if we look back at that, if I pull this up and look down here. Oh, I went too far. There you go. This is lock adder 5. And of course, our printer LU is lock adder 9. So if we take another look at that, we'll be able to see all that is relevant here as well. Here's our printer LU, same old, same old. And since this is active, we can actually go ahead and bring up the client, which you can actually pull out of here. Now, the clients are installable off the CD. If you take the host integration server CD and you throw it in your workstation and basically run the installer, it says, do you want to install the clients or the end user applications or something like that? Say yes to that, that's what you want. Okay, now you gotta sit here for 30 seconds. Session, we're gonna connect. Well, first we need to configure and say who we're connecting to. We're going to use LU. This, this can actually do Telnet 3270. It is a competent emulator, I'll be honest, it's pretty good. And then we can session start. Well, would you look at that? Look at that, looks like we're working. Whoop de doo. Simple as that. Oh. Oh man, what's the clear key? What is it? Pause break? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. End. There you go. Alright, so that's not too terribly difficult to do. Now, session configuration. I forget what the exact procedure is to get the printer to work. Also, this does have does have end of file capability. Uh, you just need to say that it's VMCMS and stuff like that. And you can specify these options. This does like LRECL, AD, RECFM, F, stuff like that. But that is not the worst thing in the world to configure. Now let's quickly hop back over to our Cisco system here. And we'll do a show S and ASW link like I promised a second ago. Okay, so what are we looking at here? What does all of this mean? Okay, so there's supposed to be an SAA Netware system that's up and running, but I still can't get SAA Network to actually work. So it's just chilling. Here's our Windows 2000 image, which host integration server and Microsoft SNA server, it all says it, or it all claims to be a low entry node, which is equivalent to like a workstation. As in, if you're running like the OS2 SNA stack as IBM intended, and you're just running it flat out, you're going to be a low, a low entry node. Now, a 3174 could also be a low entry node, so keep that in mind. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything, it just it's lower in the priority list and it can't route. Here's our VMESA link, it's a full network node. This is also a full network node. However, the OS2, the OS2 server actually speaks HPR. And as you can see, there's a ton of active sessions for this OS390 link here, and I said this right here is the default network node there. Boom, there you go. As you can see, it is it's the glorified default. There's 10 active sessions. And of course, there's a bunch of stuff we can s view here. So, okay, uh, what in the world is this? Okay, this right here is actually for AppC. So, enter or interact. This right here is for, also, 
note something a little interesting here. I'm talking to the LU, the VMESA AppC LU, through the OS390 system. So this right here is actually going Ethernet and there's channel to channel adapters that are talking to the VM system. You can do this directly, but for some unmistakable unknown reason, it won't actually work directly. I don't know what's going on there. It's kind of strange. AVS is a nightmare to configure and you have to have that OS390 system up. It's just some misconfiguration on my end. Don't replicate this because it's not what you want. Okay, SNA service message. This right here is basically like a status. Interact, of course, is for AppC, ping, stuff like that. Control point service message. Again, just sort of background traffic. Interact, this right here is our AppC ping. Okay, there's no dependent LU request of sessions. At this point, we can also do a ping SNA hsnet.os390 and the AppC ping system will answer. We can also do a ping SNA hsnet.vmesa. Uh, that didn't work. But if we ping the AVS gateway, sometimes that works. There you go. Now, you may be wondering, how in the world do you do AppC ping? Uh, well, it's actually a VM that runs. So let's actually sign on to that VM and just look at it uh, just for fun. Now, sometimes this kind of breaks AppC ping. But if we log off and log back in with uh, a ping, i figure out what I set the password to. Okay. All right, now at this point, I should be able to A ping it and we should see something. Maybe, maybe not, there we go. So it doesn't actually show anything, but the way this works is it's basically a clever set server on. And let's take a brief look at that. Actually, we'll just disconnect out of here. Uh, uh, no, we'll take a look at it. We'll do stop, because this right here is like maliciously, infamously impossible to configure. So, first of all, finding the actual aping module is like impossible. I don't even remember where I found it. I think, I think you can find it in, it's not, it's not in any of the VM ADCs, I can tell you that. But it's, it's in the AppC application suite. So if you have that installed on your VM system, you've got it. You're locked and loaded. Okay, so this right here is where all that stuff is. Set server on. This is literally... AppC VM is like deathly easy to start. Once you do set server on, bam, you're listening. You can receive AppC connections at that point. Because remember, AppC is actually IUCV. Well, IUCV and AppC VM are the same thing. When you have AppC VTAM support running, that will basically allow you to remotely make IUCV connections over SNA, and we call that AppC. All right, so now we just got to do get rid of the selection. Ah, oh, go away! Stop selecting. Okay. Okay, this right here, this is like the bloat. Uh, wow, it's actually mixed case. All right, let's walk through this because it's kind of interesting. And we'll just have like a brief look at all this. So we need to find CMREX. Uh, again, this right here is partly, okay. This right here, I have no clue. Couldn't tell you. But really what we're doing is we're just, we're running a program right here. And once that's running, bam, we're accepting connections. CPIC com right there. This is where we actually listen on the socket, quote unquote. And there you go. So we'll go ahead and restart this. So we can at least have our AppC pinging system working. But all in all, I think that's basically it. We'll take a touch of re or take a brief touch back here at Windows 2000. Um, if the stupid window would die. This right here is like notoriously difficult to get associated. We can start Telnet 3270. I guess I apparently need to save my configuration. This doesn't really doing anything because I don't actually have anything assigned. If I did assign something, it might actually do something. You do need to have a range of LUs and they do need to be LUA LUs. Uh, I believe the issue there is it requires a different log mode or something like that. Also, this does support AppC, believe it or not. Uh, somewhere around here, there is the AFTP client. We can try that. 
but it's probably not going to work. AFTP kind of lies to you. It makes you think that everything is working. I mean, in reality, it's not. Uh, we'll try this. Yeah, a product-specific error occurred. You're never going to find help on that. There's literally no help if that happens. You might as well just give up. All right, this OS igniting link needs to be bought up. But I think that's actually going to do it for this. Just a brief look at what it takes to get all that set up. It's not too terribly difficult, but that'll be it. In the next video on SNA, we'll take a look at multipath channel connections and sub-area connections between some older systems. Be safe out there, have a good one, and don't break your network.